Hello, everybody, and welcome to In the Doll World. I am your host, Jojette Taylor, and as always, I'm so excited that you're joining me today. We have such an amazing guest. I'm so excited for you to get to know who she is. Um, her name is Tamika Spencer of Tamika's Paper Arts. She is not only a doll collector, but she is an amazing paper artist. And I just want to welcome her to In the Doll World. Thank you, Tamika, for joining us today. Hi, thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, it's been, it's been, uh, it's been exciting uh, looking at your looking at your art and the things that you create with paper. And I just really thought it would be such a great opportunity to have you on the show to share, you know, what it is that you do. So again, thank you for being here. Um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into, uh, into uh, paper art? Um, it's, it's a couple, it's very weird. Um, okay. Actually. We're all, we're okay with weird. It's all right. <laughs> Well, it started, it's, it's a couple things. Um, mm -hmm. A friend of mine, actually, she, she was my next door neighbor for a really long time. Um, she actually started taking me to some of her card making classes because she mm -hmm. makes handmade cards. Mm -hmm. um, and from there, I started, um, I started doing the classes with her and just, I saw a lot of really creative stuff there, like, um the paper flowers and mm -hmm. just stuff that you do when you're scrapbooking because the, the lady that we went to she scrapbook and she did um cards mm -hmm. um either way they had a lot of stuff there right. that you can use mm -hmm. um so that's part of it another part of it is um Lori Lenz and I, I you guys interviewed her a while back. Yeah, yeah she's amazing <laughs> amazing repaint artist we love Lori yeah she's really cool yeah she's amazing um we've been friends again for a long time and so we kind of challenged each other mm -hmm. um there's a a paper artist by the name of Asaya I can't remember her last name right mm -hmm. now Okay. But either way, she's an amazing paper artist, and we both shared a love for her work. Mm -hmm. And I guess we didn't realize it until we saw her work. I think I posted it on Facebook, and Lori was like, "Oh, that's amazing! I used to do this." And I was like, "Oh my god, I've always wanted to do this." <laughs> so we ended up posing a challenge to each other for about three months. We're going to pick an idea, we're going to work on it, and then mm -hmm. we're going to post it on social media. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of really how it kind of happened. <laughs> so when you decided to do the challenge, did you know that you were going to do uh, specifically wigs or were you going to do all types of, you know, uh, all types of uh, things through paper art? Oh, I had no clue. <laughs> had no clue? So how did, you, how did you end up doing wigs then? So, well... Because the lady does paper wigs, that's what we decided to do. Mm, okay. um, he, Lori said she knew how to do it. I was like, I wanted to do it. I didn't know at all how to do it. <laughs> um, I did play around with making like wigs for my dolls with regular hair and stuff and with yarn. And, and that kind of gave me a basis of okay I can probably just layer on the paper just how mm -hmm. I actually do the yarn okay so that's kind of where I decided okay well let's play around with this experiment <laughs> um I did try to research just to see like if there was anything out there at all which there really wasn't so everything I've kind of learned and kind of played with is all through experimental okay stuff yeah but I, I think a lot of times that that happens you know when you're when you delve into something that's new and a lot of people are not doing it you tend to have to try to make things work on your own in a way right you know and just craft things that are according to how, how you how you create something so I think that's usually most creatives that's just that's just how we that's roll. just how it works <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> That is definitely how we roll. So what is the process for you first um, to start creating the uh, the wigs for the paper art wigs for, for dolls? And what is your the first process that you do when you when you start to do that? Do you sketch out how you want it to look first or do you, you know, you just put stuff together and 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 the idea comes from that? 
it it works different ways a lot of times it's according to how the idea comes to me mm. to begin with because it might be a photo shoot that I'm really wanting to do and I'm like oh and then I'll do some research like one of the um one of the shots that I've done was of a water photo shoot where her hair is like supposed to look like she's up in water mm-hmm. or so um I tried to see what that kind of looked like and then I tried to mimic and so it it just depends on exactly what um what inspires me mm-hmm. and then from there I might draw it out first okay um not all the times do I draw it out sometimes I do it really depends on what the actual idea is Mm -hmm. but I try to do a little bit of research as far as how the hair looks Mm -hmm. and then I'll go from there okay um so for that one it turned out really cool I kind of liked it and my hubby did the background for me (laughs) very cool it's always always cool when you have your your, you know your partner can help you uh, along in the process you know (laughs) yeah it's always pretty cool to work together like that. Uh, when you do that, uh, are there any a certain type of paper that you use? Is, is it, you know, does one paper uh, work better or, or is a little bit more um, you know, forgiving than another type of paper or it, does it make a difference for you? Um, for me, it doesn't. I tend to use just, I go to Michael's a lot, so I mm-hmm. use their cardstock, okay. their regular cardstock. Mm-hmm. Um, with the flowers, when I hand make the flowers, I use the company's paper, which is, um, they're called Heartfelt Creations. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I use theirs because there's, it's a little thicker. And okay. so it makes it easier to make the flowers with their paper, considering they're the company that makes the flowers. <laughs> right, right. I understand that. So, okay. um, okay. But for the most part, I just use regular cardstock. Okay. All right. Is it a certain thickness of the cardstock that you use or is just, you know, no, whatever is on sale at my okay. <laughs> okay. I get it. I get it. I wasn't sure if, you know, a certain weight, you know, produced a certain look, you know, or it, something that was thinner curls better. Or- it does. Mm-hmm. Um, but I <laughs> I experiment so much that mm-hmm. I just use whatever is on hand or whatever I need for that particular project. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been experimenting. Well, I haven't done it as of lately, but I will be since it's summer. Um, and there's a company called Rock Paper. Mm-hmm. And their paper is basically made out of rock. So it's oh, wow. um, you can get it wet for the most part. It's kind of waterproof. Wow, really? Yeah. It's really interesting. So, so I'm, cool. Yeah. <laughs> a friend of mine actually turned me on to it and she was like, you should use this. And I was like, oh, that's really cool. And so I ended up ordering some like last year. Mm-hmm. And um, I made maybe about two or three using that paper. And that paper is okay. a little bit thicker. Okay. Right. So it's a little bit more difficult to lay on the mm-hmm. the head just because right. and it takes a little bit longer to glue on there so I okay. it will take me a lot longer to use the rock paper than it would regular mm-hmm. paper okay I get that and you have to you I guess you'd have to figure out how to uh, how to manipulate that to what right. it is that you need and that, that yeah. process will take a little longer for you yeah I can understand yeah. that do you, um, the other thing too, I was thinking about vellum paper. I love vellum. I used to use it a lot when, uh, <laughs> romance consulting a, a long time ago until when I would make like, like, uh, uh, things to showcase when I would go to expos or things like that, I would use vellum paper a lot, you know, to write either notes or, you know, uh, kind of share how people can use vellum to be a little bit more romantic, you know, if they want to write a note or anything. So have you thought about using vellum? Do you use that on, on Wix? I guess I think that would be interesting. See how I do. Work. Cool. I actually I use them more in the flowers because sometimes I might need like a hibiscus which mm-hmm. might need like a thinner kind of layer yeah. into it mm-hmm. and it, it's a little bit more see-through so I would yeah. use 
either vellum or like uh i've used um cray cray paper before okay all right Very cool. uh, yeah yeah, that, that should definitely get you a really nice look to it because it's like kind of translucent in a way and it's very, yeah. very soft looking, but it's still, you still can, uh, it's still malleable, you know, that you can use yeah. different things. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. When you, how long does it take you to do, like, just say your average, the average week that you work on, how long would that take for you? It might take about a day. If I'm oh, working wow. on it constantly, it would be about a day or maybe two days. Mm -hmm. um if i'm not i would normally span it out within the week mm -hmm. okay. a couple hours during a week because mm -hmm. um i i actually use some ram wrap so i make the um, yes yeah, you can show us you have some <laughs> <laughs> oh i don't have one available um okay. oh i do So I've been trying to make one for my giant rainbow high doll. Okay. All right. So I use the saran wrap and I make a cap right okay. over the head. Okay. Um, I usually use Mod Podge. Yes. And just mm -hmm. paint it on there. Mm -hmm. um, I do one layer, let it dry, then do about six more layers, six or seven. Wow. Okay. Um, and then I let that dry. Then I layer tape over it. And then I do about two or three more coats of Mosh Posh. Mm -hmm. So this is what I end up with. Um, okay. So when I'm done with that, then mm -hmm. I technically start layering um, mm -hmm. the hair. Okay. And this is one I'm still kind of working on. Oh, um, yeah. I make a base for it. First. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then according to what the idea is, I'll start using the okay. curls and stuff mm -hmm. okay. to figure out where it's going to go. And yeah. Something like that, when you started that, and, 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 and the fact that you're going to end up with the full wig or what the other things that you want to incorporate, how long did that take you, the process right there? That, this one, um, so far, maybe about seven hours, maybe eight hours. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Okay. You work on all, all, all size dolls, mm -hmm. 12 inches and up, right? Mm -hmm. Which one, which size is, is much, is more um, time consuming to do? Um, so far, integrity dolls. Mm. Oh, I've wow. been working okay. on one of those and mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess because she's so small, that mm. it's been a little bit difficult trying to figure out the size of hair to make it look yes. like so it's, it's hair and <laughs> not like too big. Oh, okay. Um, That's interesting. So that one has been a little bit of a challenge. Mm -hmm. I love working with, I started working with my Impulse dolls because those were the ones that I kind of started to collect first. Okay. Um, my very first BJD was a dreaming I think she's called a doll, a dreaming doll or something like that. Um, I adopted her from someone else. But um, <laughs> my dolls, I love, are normally in full house. So mm -hmm. I, okay. I love working with them. Because the heads are a good size for you. Yeah, you can, they're yeah. comfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the cutting board that I use cuts the right size. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I, I love working with them. Okay, Recently, I've been working with K Wigs, and okay. I I love them too. Okay. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, for people who don't know that doll, what size doll would that be? Was that a twelve inch doll, sixteen inch doll, whatever? Um, K Wigs, I think she does seventeen inch and twenty four. Mm -hmm. I'm not too sure. And the other companies um, you like working with, what size dolls? Info House ranges mm -hmm. from everything. They have MSDs. Um, mm -hmm. I think they're called JIDs. For Info House, it's like junior, junior dolls, senior dolls, um, mm -hmm. elder dolls. And the elder dolls are like this big. They're mm -hmm. really tall. Okay. This is not the tallest, but. Wow. She's a big doll. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's beautiful, beautiful wig on her. 
Thank gorgeous. you. <laughs> oh yeah, they're gorgeous. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> that is so cool. You do just amazing work. I just love your work. Thank you. I'm not uh, for this one. I've been playing around with the idea of just wrapping them in tool and just kind of photographing mm -hmm. it that way. Okay. That's why she's technically naked. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we won't tell. We won't tell. <laughs> um, but I, I thought it was interesting you said about integrity dolls and their head being really small. I think sometimes when you, because nobody can, nobody really thinks about, okay, even though you're putting paper wigs on them, they still have to be, you know, they still have to look believable. So right. the size and the, the strands and the strips, you know, have yep. to, have to look normal to you know right. I mean? like it fits her face and so I, I don't think I didn't I really didn't think about that until you said that <laughs> about how you know how intricate it has to be so it's it's always that thing you know where you you um, see somebody do something you're like oh yeah I could do that and then you realize all the technical aspects that go uh -huh. into creating something and then you're thinking yeah no maybe I won't do that <laughs> Because yeah. you really do have to think on so many different levels, right? Of what mm -hmm. that is going to translate into being on top of her head and you want it to look like it's normal. So yeah, that makes sense. So interesting. Yeah. Hmm. I didn't think so. about that. So did so did that take you a long time to figure out? Like when you were working on different size heads, like you may have had an idea about what you wanted to look like, but then when you started working on the head, you realized that that, that style will not fit will not fit that doll because of the, the width of you know the paper i discovered that i actually have made one that's human size and i'm kind of working with one now um i kind of was playing around with the idea of having it ready for the show but i just couldn't make it work <laughs> <laughs> um but I discovered it when I even tried making a human size wig because mm -hmm. he, my, our strips have to be a lot bigger than theirs is. And so I had to just figure out the variation of it to see mm -hmm. what would actually work. Um, how I normally curl my curls is different from when I have to curl my own for the human wig and oh wow okay yeah it's 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 a lot of things that like you said I I didn't think about it until I actually had to do it and when mm -hmm. I did it that's like oh that works okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah trial and error right always yeah <laughs> so now you just how long have you been doing this like how long have you been you know working on the, the wigs and and having them photographed and you know and, and promoting what it is that you do um it started about four years ago wow really <laughs> it's, it's i've been photographing my dolls forever because i've been collecting since i was young mm -hmm. um and so photography for a while was my main focus but then it moved on to the paper wigs and mm -hmm. yeah just i i love making them they're really fun <laughs> yeah we could tell. We could tell you're having a good time because they're, <laughs> they're just fabulous, you know. I just think they're really cool. So since you've been doing uh, photography, obviously, because you do, you, you have been doing doll collecting and you've been doing your um, the uh, paper art wigs. Um, how, uh, what are your goals for the next couple of you? You know, at least the next two years in in your journey in doing the paper art wigs. And there's a couple of them. Um, I've always. I've had a, a teacher, a close teacher of mine mentioned working with cancer patients and doing mm. like paper wigs for kids. Mm. And I've seen a lady actually doing stuff like that. So I've always wanted to kind of connect with her and play around with the idea of maybe doing something. Mm -hmm. um, so that's always kind of in my wish right. list kind of thing. Wish list, right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, because it's only been four years and really I'm just learning and mm -hmm. I feel like there's so much more that mm -hmm. I can do to, um, make the wigs better. I'm always trying to perfect how to 
kind of mainstream the mm. wigs, so okay. they're not gonna actually have a problem mm. when I give it to out to clients. Right, right. Um, okay. So yeah, I understand what you were saying about the being able to um, perfect it a little bit more, so that when it, when it goes to the clients, it fits the it fits the doll the way it should, and then right. and, and so that they don't have to do extra work on the back end of them right. trying to make it fit. No, I totally understand that. So yeah, that, that's yeah. important. That, yeah, something definitely has to be, you know, you have to definitely make sure that that's, that that's something that, um, you know, doesn't happen as often because <laughs> you know, people will not, you know what I mean? Like it's, I, I can understand why it would be something that is really important to you to make sure that that, that, that doesn't happen. They're so. happy, yeah. <laughs> yeah but they're happy. So I see you have another beautiful doll. So let's let's see who that is. Oh She's yeah. A raccoon doll. So cool. <laughs> That's so beautiful, Tamika. Really. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Now do you have you have names for each design that you make? Oh have no. Names each one? <laughs> no. That would be cool for them. They they should have their own names, your own designs. Like each 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 hat, I mean each wig should have their have its own name. I <laughs> No. <laughs> it's just, like it's that is just too idea. much trouble right now. <laughs> it's a great idea. It's just it's so funny because when I was younger, I had Barbies and I had like each one named and I had probably about like 130 that were out of box. <laughs> Each one had a name. I knew who each one was. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And now you couldn't pay me to figure out which <laughs> doll is which. <laughs> but each design is so unique and beautiful. I'm telling you, they, <laughs> think about it. Just think about it. That's all I'm saying. All right. I'll think about it. It's just, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. Like, she's like, girl, I'm just trying to get some wigs done. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I was just thinking about it because I, they're so beautiful and I I could see me saying, hey, I want to order that, you know, I don't know, I don't know, Nikki or something. I don't I don't know what they're right. doing, but you know yeah. what I'm trying to say, that it would be pretty cool to do that. But but I understand you have to work on what it is that you work on. So yeah, I mean, I know there's a lot of people who love their wigs and they name it and take care of it and all of that. And that's great. And I love it. But I don't think I'll be able to remember names. <laughs> no. no, I understand. I understand. I mean, I'm just looking at. I'm looking at it at the at the uh, in the in the space of it being an art piece in a way, you know. And each right. art piece yeah. does has its own, you know, its own particular name. So that that's all. There's no you, know, you you do what you do. I mean, what I'll you do is beautiful. I'll keep it in mind. <laughs> yeah, very cool. So how do you how do you go about showcasing your art? And uh, have you been to other doll expos? I mean, I know I know with COVID it's been kind of crazy, and yeah. people people are still you know people are going out, but some people are still hesitant about them, you know, going to big events and things like that. So how, because we've been in COVID for the last two and a half years, pretty much, how have you <laughs> how have you been showcasing your artwork and and uh, and, and where has it been, you know, seen at, you know? Um, I've been featured in a couple magazines. Mm -hmm. um, Fashion Doll Quarterly did mm. a couple articles on the work. Nice. Um, I normally send in my work to the Stan magazine as well. Mm, okay. Um, there's a new magazine that kind of came out. Mm -hmm. I believe their name is Endora. Dora. I haven't been yes. able to. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've sent some of my work there as well. Um, I haven't done it lately, but I will be getting back into the swing of things. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, that's cool. Um, also, I've been featured on Doll Magazine. They did an article about my work. Mm -hmm. And also, I've done a couple um, art exhibitions virtually through... Uh, art number 23 um, exhibitions. In mm -hmm. fact, I'm waiting to hear from one, hopefully soon. <laughs> okay, that's great. That's yeah. great. So instead of just, just going into just doll expanding into the art part of that as well. Right, yeah. Okay, that's pretty cool. I like that. 
I did see your um, your work in Endura magazine. They did a beautiful. Oh, okay. They did a beautiful uh, layout. Yeah, they really did yeah. of your work. So, you know, so I, I'm just happy that you that you're getting out there more and that people are seeing more of what it is that you do because I really think what you do is just really beautiful. And, uh, and I'm excited. I'm excited for you. I'm excited for your journey. And I'm excited for other people to see who, you know, to see who you are and what you do and, and how you do, um, uh, you know, the art that, uh, that, you, uh, that you showcased on dolls. I think it's really so cool. It, it gives them another, another dimension, you know, to, to their collection, too. It adds something else to their collection when they could put one of the wigs on. You know that you right. create. That you create. So thank you so much for bringing that into the doll community. Oh, thank you. <laughs> You're so welcome. You're so welcome. So where can uh, people uh, find you and and find out a little bit more about uh, the paper art wigs that you create? Um, I'm on Instagram, Tamika's Paper Arts. Um, also, you can reach me at TamikaPaperArts at gmail.com. And I'm on Facebook as Tamika Spencer. Okay, great. Great. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time, Tamika. And thank you for uh, talking to us about your process and the type of wigs that you make and your love for not just wigs or paper art, but also for doll collecting. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Thanks so much for being in the doll world with us. <laughs> thank you for having me. <laughs> You're so welcome. Honey. You're so welcome. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.